Hello and welcome back to Chasing Green Arrows. Uh, today we will be reviewing the FPL <coughs> game, blank game week, game week 29. There's an international break, so there's no games this week, so you don't need to make your changes. But we thought we'll, uh, you know, review our last week and then uh, look ahead to the next couple of game weeks now that run-in is coming, um, you know, in the Premier League. So all the FPL managers will want to make changes and see and, you know, probably reassess. This is the time to reassess and plan forward. Um, it feels strange, no foot, no Premier League football after like, you know, the last six months been back to back. There's been midweek games as well. But um, yep. yeah, I think it's a good time to reassess for all FPL managers. And I have with me, my brother, Yusuf Ismail, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How was your week, man? Uh, the blank game week, only four games, but uh, how did you do? I did not blank in the blank game week. So I had the two changes from the previous week and then I took a minus eight hit. And with the minus eight, I got 66 points. Meaning if I had, if I do the net, it's 58 points. But I think it was well worth having a minus eight for that return. And yeah. uh, that's pretty good. My stars were, I brought in Veltman. He scored 10 points. So he's already made up the minus eight by himself. A two for Veltman on any week is not bad. Uh, then I brought in Lingards, Jay Lings. And uh, we'll get to your team, but he was a superstar for me. But I didn't captain, captain him, unfortunately. I went for the safe pick. Uh, with Harry Kane, so he also had a return, so I got 14 points from him. Bamford, I could have captained him. He came with 11, Rafinha eight. So I think and Antonio, like I brought him, I brought in Antonio, and uh, he also got me seven. So overall, like productive returns. Uh, I only had Fernandez on the pitch who didn't play, so 10 players on the pitch for the blank game week, and I think I don't have to do much tweaking going forward too until that we discuss the wild card maybe this week or next week. But uh, it didn't require an overhaul, and I took the more long-term approach. So I think I'm happy with the team, even not just for the blank game week, but even going forward, I don't have to do too many changes until I do decide to do my wild card. Uh, yeah. yeah. So so Veltman, Lings, and Kane and Bamford and Rafinha, like everyone did well. <laughs> yeah, and I think apart from that, it was Trossard who had a big game week. Uh, the people who had him, uh, they did really well. And um, uh, what was it? A goal and an assist. Uh, Fourteen or- points. 14 points that, that yep. if you ca- captain him 28, but yeah, I think Cross had unbelievable week. Uh, for me personally, um, I put Lingard captain, I took a risk and it paid off. J Lings, if you're watching, I love you, man. Like, uh, brilliant. Like, <laughs> and he's been, uh, he's changed uh, West Ham season as well. Not West Ham season, but like, you know, just everyone's, uh, uh, like, his image has changed now. Like, I think a lot of managers will get him. And my question oh, yeah. to you is these players, the likes of Cross Hard, Lingard, uh, Veltman as well, to a certain extent. Would you uh, carry on with them going on in future game weeks, like uh, like the next game week that everyone is playing? So would you go uh, continue with these kind of players, or would you like swap them for the big boys coming back in? Uh, it depends on where you are. If you have a wild card, then maybe not. But I think Lingard, because of the red hot form he's in, he could be another Gundogan in the sense that he could have a string of another three, four, five games. Uh, where he returns. West Ham's fixtures are good at the end of the season. The last five, six games are awesome. Uh, they have a bit of a tough fixture list in the next few game weeks, but they have had tough games in the last two, three weeks on paper, but they've done really well. So I think uh, Lingard is a hold. If you have him, keep him. Um, Brighton, I would not stick to a midfielder. Trossard, I don't think he's got that sustainability that he's going to return every week. This was a good week for him and it paid off. But I would say if you're doing Brightman, Brightman, sorry, Brighton, uh, you would keep one defender and maybe someone like a Veltman who's 4.3 so you can afford to keep him on the bench. So I would not take the results of this week as an indication for longer term uh, team management, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for Brighton, I mean, uh, last couple last couple of games, um, you know, they uh, they've won, and before that, they played some good football. They've been unlucky, so I would actually watch out for someone like a Trossard. But I agree with you; it's just one week. You shouldn't like you know put all your eggs in one basket like that. But at the same time, a differential I would, pick at the I would say at the best, it's a differential pick. If yeah, you I would I would keep uh, Trossard and then maybe um, at least keep him on the bench. But I would yeah, depending on the fixtures, play him as well. Uh, but that's just my thought uh, as of now because I think no, it's a it's a it's a valid opinion. I think that's also a good. You can go either way with Brighton. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. And yeah, apart from that, I think Bamford like great week again. Like he's got, he's scoring goals as well. So uh, with these kind of players, I f- I feel that you just need to back them. The likes of Bamford, Kane, um, uh, these kind of strikers, you just back them. Sometimes they will blank for you, but uh, when they come up, they come up big. So I think you need to back these kind of players. Rafinha for me has been the 
player of the season for FPL, player of the season for sure. I don't have him in my team till now. But mm-hmm. uh, regardless, I think uh, he's taken everyone by surprise. Uh, I've been watching Leeds closely and it's not just his FPL numbers. Of course, that's a huge thing. He's, you know, uh, bringing up the numbers big time. But apart from that, yeah. the way he plays, he's getting into the box. He's providing assists. Uh, he's getting to dangerous positions. He could have scored a couple more goals in the last, uh, he could have, yeah. last game. And uh, we were watching that and, like, you know, he missed a few chances. But... Uh, I think he's just been unbelievable. He's 5.7, I think, and that's just a bargain. You have to have him in your team, I think. You have to have him in your I team. I think even if you drop Bamford, you should drop him. And yeah, he's 5.7. And that's like after price increases. And uh, after price I would say, look, look, at his, look at his last uh, few returns, right? He's gotten... Uh, where is it? Eight points, three, two, 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 eight, four, five, six, nine, fifteen, thirteen. So that's like, yeah, he, he like he, even if he's not in your starting lineup because you think Leeds has a bad fixture, he's a great option to have on the bench. Yeah, he's, ex- that's his, his shots uh, on target. Um, you know, his chances created, expected goals. Uh, they've all been rising throughout the season for him and. Well, Leeds are a type of team who will attack and he's the focal point. So I think, um, you know, for me, that was Grealish initially in the first half of the season, but then he got injured. So I think it's yeah. Rafinha now. I think he's the star of the FPL. He will get you assists. He will bag you goals as well. And if you just watch him, even the games where he's blank, where you said three points, three points, he got chances in those points. He, uh, in those games, he created chances as yeah. well. So I would definitely, definitely uh, stick with him. Uh, but uh, if you want to just bring up the fixtures for uh, next game week, uh, we'll just... Sure. Uh, like we'll go into more detail uh, next week before and we'll see what to do uh, but I was just thinking um, if we can just have a brief look there's a, a few good games and I just wanted to see what what strategies we can use uh, right now I feel that um, uh, this is game week 30 this is game week 30 yeah I don't know what to do with Mo Salah I still have him in my team uh, I'm requesting him again to please like try to provide points I'm gonna back you um, because I kicked him out man I'm sorry Mo I kicked you out yeah, and I another, have patience. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still backing him. Uh, with Gareth Bale also, I wanted to ask you. Um, that's a good topic. I saw ah. that Spurs fixture there. There's some juicy... I think Spurs and Arsenal, to a certain extent, actually have a, the best run in from the top teams yes. going into uh, you know the last few games of the Premier League. Liverpool too. You don't discount Liverpool's last five fixtures. They're not in form. That's a big point. But the fixture list on paper is also green for Liverpool in the last five, six games. That's why I want to hang on to Salah. But those are, also smart the, option. those are also the fixtures that um, Liverpool have struggled in. So uh, so that's why I'm a bit confused about that's that. That's a fair point. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but I agree with you. I think you can't really, like, you know, you can't ignore that fact. But um, at the same time, uh, I don't know. These fixtures look amazing. I think Kane is a must uh, for sure. But Gareth yes. Bale, what are your thoughts on him? Because Mourinho has used him sparingly. He didn't play in the last ge- in the blank game week. A lot of people had him. I had him as well. I didn't captain yeah. him. I brought but- him in. Yeah, but he blanked for me completely, and you know I didn't have anyone uh, one on the bench to come for him, so I like lost points there. Um, someone like him, you know, when he does play, he can provide you the points. But like you know, uh, how much game time is he gonna get in this run in, and do you think it's worth keeping him? I don't think Gareth Bale is a long term prospect. I think you keep him in for as long as Son is injured, or at least he's consistently back in the team. Uh, because of his, uh, the fact that even when he plays, he plays like if he starts, he's, you know, he plays only until around 70 minutes. That's one thing. And then he's publicly come out in the last weekends, like, yeah, I came to Tottenham for training because for the Euros. And I will go back to Madrid. So, like, Bale has become, like, not unstable, but he's a bit of a, like, a, yeah, we'll see, whatever. So, like, as an FPL manager, he's a great differential. When he's, when he performs, it's, it's insane. He could bag you a hat trick. But I would keep if you have him, I would keep him for maybe at least this week just to see what, what he does against Newcastle. I think he'll start. Uh, but when Sun is 100% fit, I think Sun is definitely the more stable option. He's more expensive. But uh, yeah, I would say Bale is a short term solution. Uh, Harry Kane is a permanent solution, I think. You do not drop him. Uh, but uh, wait for Sun and then see what he does. I think for 9.5, it's a bit too expensive to have him as a let's see what happens every week kind of player. But uh, I, my opinion would be, my final verdict would be keep him at least for this one. See what happens. Monitor Son and then see what happens. But definitely Spurs fixtures, their run-in and everything. I think it's you need at least two. I wouldn't do, I'm not a fan of Spurs defenders, but at least Harry Kane 
and then son or bale should be in the team yeah and um yeah i agree with that i i feel that actually um you know uh, stick with bale for this week they're playing newcastle i think it's a really good fixture but uh, yeah. if you just if you click next um arsenal have two back to back really good fixtures if, as you see here, that's Sheffield. And, then and if you click next before again, that, in 30? No, no, not before they, oh, that. Oh, they have Liverpool. Okay. So, in no. 31, they have uh, Sheffield. And then, and then next they again, have Fulham. Uh, Fulham. So, they have yeah. really good fixtures, I think. Um, so, um, you know, uh, Spurs play Newcastle while Arsenal play Liverpool. So, I would stick to uh, Bale. But then, I might uh, recommend shifting to someone like a Saka or a Pepe. Uh, Saka, I feel like he's... Uh, really good value for money. He will create chances. He will score your goals, provide assists. Um, I think uh, against West Ham, uh, was it uh, he picked up something or before that he picked up a knock? But I think if he's fully fit, I would really uh, go with Saka. Lacazette as well, uh, I think is a very good striker option for these kind of fixtures. Uh, Arsenal are unpredictable, but I've seen some good th- uh, good things from them in the attacking end. Defensively, still, they're conceding a few goals here and there, and they have mistakes in them. But attacking-wise, I think, uh, you know, the likes of Lacazette, Saka, Pepe, these are good options. Um, just, uh, yeah, make sure you follow Arsenal because they have a really good run-in, so do Spurs. And I would, I would say uh, Tierney is also a very good option in defense for these matches as well. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Tierney is a good option, but the only thing is I don't trust the clean sheet, man. I don't think they're going to get a clean sheet consistently. But maybe against Sheffield and Fulham, they might do. Uh, if, if you're an Arsenal fan or if you have a tendency to like back Arsenal players, then Tierney is a good option. But I, I can respect what you're saying. Yeah, and um, uh, J- Chelsea, if you want clean sheets, you go to Chelsea. They're top right now. Since Tuchel came, I think they're top in clean sheets. Uh, you know, um, uh, they've they've been uh, even if they're drawing games, they're ma- making sure they have a clean sheet. They defensively, they've been very solid. Um, you know, the likes of Espelicueta, Mendy, uh, Chilwell to a certain extent, uh, Reese James, R- they, Rudiger, Rudiger would Rudy, be a good, great pick because yeah, he's Rudiger. four point six. 4.6, yeah. I think Rudiger is a great pick. I would go. Uh, uh, he's a bargain, absolute bargain. And defensively, they're doing a really good job. So I would really look at that Chelsea defense. Attackingly, Chelsea have been a bit. They haven't been that clinical, to be honest with you. But they've been just just good enough to win games or draw games. But I think um, defensively, uh, they have some really good picks, and they're playing West Brom. So. I think very good fixture to have a Chelsea defense for sure. And just speaking about fixtures, uh, and we're talking about Leeds, right? Uh, as much as as good as a run in Arsenal have in the next few weeks, Leeds has a very poor run in. Uh, this week, uh, Leeds play Sheffield, which is a great fixture. But then it's Man City, Liverpool, and Man United. So, uh, and tying that in with the wild card, if you have the wild card, uh, people are debating whether to play the wild card this week in game week thirty or thirty one. I personally, I'm going to play probably play my wild card in 31 because I think I'm going to offload Leeds apart from Rafinha because of his value. I think uh, Dallas is definitely not a good choice for those matches. And- I agree with Dallas, but attackingly, I don't really mind if to keep Leeds players because if even if you saw when they lost to United 6-2 or whatever that was, they scored there. Against yeah. Liverpool, they lost 4-3. They scored three goals. Uh, City, I don't remember uh, that game. Uh, did they beat? Uh, City or the Drew with City, something happened. But um, in big games, I'm not worried about their attack. It's their defense. Yes, I think Dallas, you can move him out. But uh, Rafinha, Bamford, I might th- I might just uh, keep them, you know, because uh, I, they will still provide attacking-wise. Hmm. It's not going to... Who else? Okay, so if you were to take out Bamford, who are, you, who are your other options? Just theoretically. That's what I'm saying. I, w- I don't think I would take him because my other options would be Vardy. Uh, then what? In United, there'll be Martial. Uh, Calvert-Lewin uh, will be another option. Okay. Um, uh, and then uh, who else is there? Uh, I think uh, from City, Jesus. No, I don't. He's not consistent enough. Uh, Ollie Watkins is your other option. So, I but he's not. He's not good without uh, Grealish. Like he hasn't been performing. So, oh yeah, I, I think keep... okay. I I'm, I'm I'm coming around to your point of view. Uh, keep Rafinha and Bamford, but I'm still gonna wild card because I think I need to revamp my defense. Uh, because I think Martinez's run is gonna be very difficult at the end of the season. Mendy is cheaper, and they have a solid defense. Uh, the triple Chelsea strategy is becoming popular and it's being talked about. So, you know, I think uh, even Wolves are not being talked about as much. Cody, 4.7 is great value. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. I think that uh, the, the, I think defense, the, the wild card, this one, because the, there's so many injuries to attackers and good midfielders. And then there's people like Salah who have not been performing. I think maybe for me anyway, it'll be a more of a defensive tweak. 
And then, you know, as we go towards the end of the season, like pick certain teams. Like I think West Ham, I think I'm going to bring in Cresswell or Dawson, uh, if, depending on my budget. Chelsea's definitely, like you said. Uh, Man City, we haven't talked about really. But with City, it's difficult, man, because they're on playing on four fronts. And there's a chance because they're, they're so ahead in the league that they're not going to prioritize players in the league. And they're going to just like uh, focus definitely on the Champions League. And then they have a League Cup final and then they're in the FA Cup. You know. I, I, they will play the uh, big guns uh, until they win the title. But yes, uh, because they're challenging in all fronts. I'm uh, thinking long term, end of the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they'll pri- they'll prioritize Champions League for sure, and a few uh, once they seal the league. But until then, I think a few players here. But I completely agree with you because they have you know amazing options both on the bench and starting. They they have that luxury to rotate. So even I agree. Maybe Kevin De Bruyne, but apart from that, anybody can be rotated. Um, even even Kevin De Bruyne is a rotation risk. My strategy with City is keep the cheapest person, which is Gundogan, because you know he can come around. Maybe spend your budget more on players who are who are shoo-ins to start. Yeah, I don't know. I, That's what I think. I don't have De Bruyne. I don't I, think I'll I, I, I like. I would just like uh, you know how we, you've been uh, picking City players for now. How everyone's picking. I would just keep it like that because Kevin De Bruyne will get game time. He will get game time. It's just once mm-hmm. they see in the league, then that rotation policy will uh, get even further thing. He will get rotated now as well. Don't get me wrong. They will get rotated with the Champions League and everything. But yeah. just make sure during that week you have your eyes out on the press conferences and everything. Apart from that, I think they will play a strongish team. So um, let's see how that goes. We'll further see now. This is the international break. So I'm not going to ask you any captaincy picks now. We'll do a separate uh, episode for that uh, closer to the game week uh, thir- uh, 30. Yeah. Uh, for this now, is just more of a like a, how what we're thinking, you know, yeah. maybe longer term strategies uh, and that sort of stuff. Like, I would say to recap, like your teams to target is like Chelsea, especially defense. Uh, Wolves is a good pick. Liverpool is more of a differential because if you stick with Salah and then he returns at the end of the season, that's you know you're going to be in a great position. Uh, United, I'm not. I think I'm sticking with Bruno because I think between Salah and Bruno. Bruno is more likely to return at this point, I feel, but I could be wrong completely. And uh, but one one shout out on the United front, Luke Shaw, man, he's becoming yeah. really good. And no, he's and he's fantastic. his price is five point two. So he's uh, if you're wild carding or bringing trying to bring someone in, he might not give you the clean sheet every week, but he's he's got uh, attacking p- threat potential. He would definitely get you an assist. He could even score. So um, keep an eye out. For that, yeah, no, fun. Uh, he's been fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I think um, we'll g- go into further detail in the next episode uh, when we uh, once international break is coming to an end. We'll see what the injury updates are. We'll see who's available, who's not available, and we'll take the captaincy picks forward and everything. Um, if we need to play the wild card now or hold it for uh, hold it back for a bit, and what are the good options going forward? Um, you know, who to stick with after your blank game week? You know, the likes of Trossard, the likes of Lingard. Um, we discussed that briefly, but like, you know, uh, closer to the game week, we'll have a better idea in terms of fitness, injury updates and everything. So I think uh, this was a good episode just to, you know, uh, recap and also just uh, think forward. Uh, you know, Take a breath because there's there's weeks where it's like you had one day turnaround. So it's like, take yeah. it easy. Don't focus on FPL for a week and then start thinking about it from, you know, this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I think just uh, sit back, enjoy the international games or just relax, play some golf, whatever. And then closer to the <laughs> game week, we'll come back with an episode and next week and uh, hopefully discuss in more detail. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. I think it was a great episode and uh, catch you next week. Yep. Catch you in the next one, man. Take care.